Hey guys, welcome back to part 6 of the navigation component tutorial. In this part we will implement this options menu you can see here, because the navigation component also makes it very easy to connect options menu items to destinations in the navigation graph. So let's see how we can do this. We go back into our project and first we will need another fragment. We start with the layout and because the layout will be very similar to the home fragment, we just copy paste this. And our new fragment will be an imaginary settings screen. So we call this fragment settings. But again, this is just dummy data. This will not actually have any real settings functionality. We uh, change this to a settings fragment. We delete the button because we won't need it. And then we change home screen to settings. Okay, and that's already it. This is our settings screen. Next, we create our settings fragment Kotlin class. So as usual, we right click on our package, create a new Kotlin class. We give it the same name as we uh, set in the context attribute here in XML. Settings fragment, we select class. It has to extend Android X fragment, just like before. And in the constructor, we pass our um, fragment settings layout. Okay, great. And next we have to add this new fragment to our navgraph. So let's go into our navgraph XML file and let's switch back to the design view. Here we add our new settings fragment to the navgraph. This time we will not draw an action. So we will not um, draw one of these arrows to the settings fragment because we will navigate to this one directly by its ID. And we will be able to navigate to the settings fragment from everywhere in the navgraph, not from one specific destination. But before we forget it, let's change the label because remember, this will now be visible in the toolbar because we've connected it in the last video. And let's set, set this to just settings. All right. And an options menu needs a menu resource file. So next we uh, right click on res create a new Android resource file. I'm gonna call it options menu, but again, the name is up to you. And from resource type, we select menu. Then we click OK. And now it has created this menu's folder here in the rest folder with this options menu. And here we switch over to the split view or the code view. And in here we add one item with opening angle bracket item which we give the title settings. This will be the settings options menu. We set show as action to never, so it will always be shown in this overflow menu and not as an icon, so we don't have to prepare an icon. And then important, we have to set the idea to the same idea as our settings fragment here in the navigation graph has, this one. Because this is what connects later this options menu item to the destination in the nav graph. And that's it for our options menu for now. And when you've added this, we switch back to the main activity. Where we now inflate our options menu the usual way by overriding on create options menu, where we take the menu inflator, which is a property of the activity class, call inflate, We pass our menu file we just created and the menu variable we get passed here. This is how we basically activate our options menu as the menu for this activity. Then we also have to return true, otherwise this options menu will not be visible. And then to actually handle the click on an options item, we have to override on options item selected. This is also normal not specific to the nav component. And here we return item, which is the menu item that was clicked. We get pass it by this method dot on nav destination selected, which is another extension function of the navigation component library where we have to pass the nav controller. And this is what navigates to the destination we clicked if their IDs match. 
If this returns false for some reason, which means that it couldn't navigate to another screen, we have to call the super method to bubble up this click and do whatever step comes next. But usually this should not be called. And that's it for now. So let's try it out. Now we have our options menu visible here. And when we click our settings item, we navigate to the settings screen and we can navigate back. But there are a few things to mention here. First of all, this transition animation, you can see it. This slight fading animation is actually hard coded for these options menu items. It's added under the hood when we call this method here on enough destination selected. That's one thing. The other thing is when we navigate to one of the other screens and then uh, go to settings and back, we are back to the home destination, to the start destination of the nav graph. This is the default behavior. The second one is easy to change. So let's start with this one. For this, we go back into our options menu. And here we can add another attribute, which is menu category, and we can set, the, set this to secondary. This will not cause the options menu item to navigate back to the home destination. And this is also in the documentation. So this is not a hack. This is the appropriate way to do it. So let's start it again and see how it works. All right, now let's go to another screen. When we now go to settings and go back, we are back to the screen where we were before. Great. So this is how you can fix this problem, which is not really a problem. It's just the default behavior. But what we can still not do with this options menu items is changing the animation because as I already said, this one is hard coded and we can't send data over. I think this is the appropriate behavior for options menu items, because if you want to navigate to, a, for example, a settings screen, then you usually don't want to send any data to it. Nevertheless, that brings me to my next topic, which are global actions, because global actions are also a way how we can navigate to a, a destination from anywhere we want. But this time we can do it the normal way with animations and arguments. And I think you should not use global actions as options menu items, but we will use another options menu item in this example, because it's the easiest way to get a button into all our screens without having to change all our layouts. So we go back into our options menu XML file and add another item here. So this one will say uh, terms and conditions. It's just an example. You can name it whatever you want, but we have to escape this Amazon sign because otherwise XML will complain. So this is how it looks. And I'm going to copy this so we can reuse it later. Show as action never here as well. And we give it an idea, terms and conditions. However, this time, this is an arbitrary idea. This is not the idea of a destination, like for our settings fragment, because we will handle this like a normal menu item click. Nevertheless, we need another fragment for this. So let's copy our settings fragment layout file, call it fragment terms. We change the text here to terms and conditions and the fragment class will be called terms fragment. Then uh, let's copy uh, our settings fragment KT file, call it terms fragment. And of course, inflate our fragment terms layout. When we have added this, we go back into our nav graph where we now want to add our newer terms fragment to the editor. And for the label, we add the same terms and conditions name with the escaped Amazon sign. But if this is too confusing for you, just type in whatever you want. This doesn't matter here. And remember the idea does not have to match the idea of the menu item this time, because we will navigate with a normal uh, nav controller dot navigate car. And we also don't need manual category secondary because this is only important for 
normal options menu items that we connect to the nav graph with this on nav destination selected car. But this time we don't need this stuff. Um, back to our nav graph. But now we need to add an action. But now, of course, it would be very inconvenient to draw such an action from all our destinations to this terms fragment, because we want to be able to navigate to the screen from, uh, from everywhere. And it would also be uh, hard to uh, set this up in our main activity, because we would have to check for each destination and call the appropriate action, or just um, navigate by the ID directly. But then again, we don't have compile time saved here, and we can't forward arguments. So we need an action, but this time we right click, go to add action and we add a global action. And as the name implies, this is an action which we can use from anywhere. And it's um, indicated by this little arrow that doesn't start anywhere and just points to the global destination. Now we won't send any data to this fragment, but let's add animations. And this time I've um, prepared four different animations. This time we will scroll vertically just so it looks a bit different. Again, they are in the GitHub repository below, so you can copy them from there if you haven't done this yet. And this time we use slide in top for enter enum, then slide out bottom, slide in bottom, and slide out top. So add these animations in your project as well. And when you've done this, we go to our main activity again. But we now want to make a change to on options item selected. Because here we now want to first check return if item dot item idea is equal to r dot id dot terms and conditions, which is the idea of our new menu option here. If we click this one, then we don't want to call our on nav destination selected because this is the normal way without animations and so on. This time we want to use our global action. So we create a while action, which we assign to a nav graph. Again, we have to rebuild our project first. So we comment this out so it doesn't show an error. Build, rebuild project. We will still see an error because the syntax here is not correct, but that doesn't matter. We can just close this, uncomment this, nav graph directions dot action global terms fragment. This time, these class names here are generated from the idea of the nav graph itself because it's a global action. Up here, our navigation tag has the ID nav graph. This is what generates this class when we rebuild the project and then the name of the action just like for any other action. We don't have to pass any arguments here and then we take our nav controller call.navigate the usual way and pass our action and we also have to uh, return true to tell this method that we uh, handle the menu item click. And else if we don't click this one then we want to handle uh, the menu item click the normal way. We can uh, delete return because we already call return up here, but we want to put this inside the ads block like this. And now when we click our terms and conditions item, we will use our normal global action. Otherwise we will handle the menu item click with the on nav destination selected method for the settings fragment. So let's run it and try it out. Now we have our second item up here. Let's go to another screen, click on terms and conditions, and we see this animation. Um, if you like it or not, doesn't really matter. Just leave it out if you want. Terms and conditions. We are back to the previous destination and we can navigate to this one from anywhere as well because it's a global action. Just like our other menu, menu item, just with more flexibility. Great. In the next part of this video series, we will implement a bottom navigation view and connect it to our nav graph because I think this is interesting as well. And it's a really popular UI element. 
in the part afterwards, we will uh, implement a navigation draw. And then in part nine, we will implement a deep link where we can click a link, a web link, and then get automatically redirected to a destination in our graph. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss anything and take care. Thank you.